Well, thanks for staying after a long week. Uh, we appreciate it. I hope it's going to be worth your time. Uh, we have two great lecturers that you guys chose today. This is a, kind of a thing they started a few years ago where you guys get to choose your last lecture, uh, you know, who gets to present it and stuff. And um, So it's kind of a transition ceremony. And after this, we can all go to the commons and eat some food and kind of, you know, take pictures or whatever. And I asked Dr. Chamberlain to present his doctoral thesis to us. Uh, so he's going to be doing that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And uh, so here we go. I'll just give the mic time. No notes required. Uh, there'll be no clickers. I heard you lost your clickers, so no, no clickers will be required for this. Uh, maybe I'll turn out. I, you know me. I'm stuck on. I'm addicted to PowerPoint, so I have to have a PowerPoint slide or two. Okay, I love this picture. Why? Why do I love this picture? Because I think this is indicative of what's going to. Hit. First of all, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me have a part in, in building your careers and your professions. Thank you for letting me have a small part in helping you help others, okay? Uh, one thing, people, a bunch of people graduated Saturday, okay? That's always a really cool time, not just for the dean because he says it, but also for me. We sit 168 people graduated, okay? I calculated it out. Leave it to a basic scientist to calculate this out. <laughs> Average physician will probably help 10 persons a day, although the family practitioner will see 20 to 25 patients. So I'm being a, a, a kind, of, kind of conservative. 10 people a day, right? 168 students. 1,680 people a day, okay? In a, in a week, 8,400 people, okay? In a 48-week year, figuring you'll get vacations maybe, okay? <laughs> okay. 402,000 people or help from just one class. Wow, that makes me really excited about this privilege I have to serve you, to help you in your career. And thank you for asking me to give you this last lecture. Don't take notes. I don't want to see pens moving. There'll be no PowerPoint or hand, there'll be no handouts and this won't be on the web, okay? So, so just to let you know, but this is the last lecture. This picture I love because I think of KSUM as sort of this cloister that we have you in and then when you go out to third year, we take you out to that bigger world. See that bigger world out there? That bigger world we call medicine, where you're going to learn to interact with all kinds of people and, and, and hopefully apply some of these details that we helped you with. Well, <laughs> this request that you gave me made me kind of think. You know, I started thinking. Okay, first of all, the thing I thought about is, wow, that's cool, and thank you very much. Okay, I really appreciate you, you asking me to give you this last lecture. Um, this is the last lecture. The only thing I think that keeps you between you and your boards is ACLS test tomorrow, right? So, so and that's probably going to be fun because you're going to put things in people or plastic people. And <laughs> stand back. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff. All that kind of fun stuff where, you know, saving lives, plastic lives anyways. But you'll be saving lives. But, so I thought, well, that's cool. Thank you so much. The other thing, though, is I, I'm a worry wart, okay? So I go, oh, gee, what should I say? I don't know. <laughs> You know, I don't want to say something stupid, something bad, something that's not very valuable to you. So that made me worry a little bit. But then I thought, okay, what has helped me in the past? And there's been three things that have helped me in the past with my life and my life's journey. And so I wanted to share you with those things. Here's the three things that have helped me a tremendous amount, and I hope will help you. And I think Dr. Evans has some things he, she wants to share with you as well. And the first thing is what my dad said to me one time when I'm a worrywart, okay? I thought when I was in high school that I'd end up in a ditch somewhere starving to death. I really did, okay? <laughs> I had no idea what I wanted to do for a living, and I worried about that for days on end, okay? And through college, it got worse, you know? <laughs> biology major, what do you do when you're a biology major? <laughs> Okay, it's sort of like other majors that some people choose that you go, gee, you got to do something else in order to, to use that major, right? Okay, so but anyways, my dad said to me, he said, son, do what you want to do in this life, not what you have to do. Now, why did my father say that? For 20 years, my dad worked a job he hated every day he got up to do that job. And he told me, son, do what you want. You've been given the ability to do what you want in this life, so do it pick something you enjoy doing every day of your life. I encourage you to do what you want, not what you have to do in this life. The next thing is see the forest, okay? We have shown you an awful lot of trees in the last two years. So many trees, they're coming out all kinds of orifices. 
Okay. Right. Okay. So, so you've seen all kinds of things. But I want you to, in this next phase of your education, to look at the forest, to see the forest. Okay. And then lastly, the next thing that my mother said, which induced a lot of guilt, but I found a way to get around this. Okay. Okay. Found a way to get around this was, to whom much is given, much is required, so serve gratefully. Okay? To whom much is given, much is required, so serve gratefully. And I'll tell you how I worked all that out to do what I enjoy doing and feel that I'm doing of hopefully value in this world. So do what you want to do, not what you have to do. Now let me ask you this. How long have you wanted to be a physician? Think about that. How many of you thought about being a physician when you were in elementary school? Raise your hands. Okay. No, just keep your hands up. Okay. How many of you thought about this when you were in high school? Okay. How many of you thought about this in college? Okay. How many of you just thought about this when you hit medical school and said, well, I have no other choice? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm hoping that by now you've said, yes, this is what I want. Okay. okay. But think about this. How long have you waited? How much work have you gone through over the last, I don't know, however many years of your lives that you've worked toward this? Folks, you're here. You're there. You've done it. We've tried hard to get rid of you, and you're still here. <laughs> you're, you're here. This dream is coming. Think of this. This dream is actually coming true. Okay? This dream is actually coming true. Think about that. All that stuff you went through this week that you're exhausted from, just want to refresh you. It's coming true, folks. There is very little standing between you and being the thing you would like to be, and that's being a physician. Very little. And... Unfortunately, we think of those things as being enormous, okay? And that's because we forget to look back to see how much we've done. Remember two years ago, about this time? Some of you might have heard about coming to medical school. You thought it was cool and were scared. Remember that? Or maybe you heard, out, heard in August that you were coming to medical school <laughs> and you were scared, <laughs> okay? All the tests, all the trials, all those hurdles, all those things, all those crazy PhDs that you had to go through, okay. you're, you've, you've successfully run that course. You're there, okay? And there's only the boards, okay? Look at all the things you've survived. There's only the boards and those rotations. And in those rotations, I'm hoping what you're gonna find out is what do I wanna do, okay? What do I wanna do? Now, some of you have made promises, okay, to family or friends, I am going to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> And all of your folks are back saying, yes, my son or daughter is going to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> and then you get into that rotation and you hate it. <laughs> Don't do that, folks. You invested way too much of yourself to be something you hate to be. You're at the verge of doing what you want to do for the rest of your life. Don't do something you've promised someone else to do when you hate it. Okay? So this next phase of your education, I see, is a time for you to ask a very important question. Is what type of physician do I, I, not what mom wants to be, me to be, not what dad wants me to be, not what my spouse wants me to be, but what kind of physician do I want to be? One where I look forward to going to work every day. One where you ex are excited about, I don't know, cracking a chest or looking at a runny nose or <laughs> heavens forbid but maybe at someone's bottom end <laughs> I know different strokes for different folks okay this idea of what type of physician do I want to be this is the time to explore that don't make, don't ruin that exploration time by the promises you've made okay or the, the quotes you you're being quoted at at home or uh, overseas or wherever okay Figure out what you want to be. Find out what you love to do, and in my opinion, do it. I love my job. I really can't believe that people pay me to do this job. Okay. Now, I will continue to take pay if there's any. <laughs> Dr. Laird, I will continue to take pay. <laughs> he just, I, I haven't got a contract yet, but... <laughs> I get up in the morning, I'm glad to go to work. I'm looking forward to going to work. I'm going, yes, another day, this is exciting. Whether it be a day when I'm gonna teach students or whether it's the day I'm gonna do some research, or whether it's the day, even the craziness of myself to do a committee type of thing, okay?